Hey everyone, it's Melanie. Welcome back to my channel. This is my best friend Ashley and she is pregnant. Yay! Yay. <laughs> she is pregnant with baby number two and she's due at the end of May. Um, is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. Girl. Second girl. And so we are going to make her a bunch of baby things. We're going to be doing a baby series. And today she came by and brought me some of these. So what are these? Um, they're old handkerchiefs that I found at flea market from a friend that had a bunch. And I just thought they were so fun. So we're going to turn them into burp cloths. And uh, we have a bunch of other really fun projects planned to celebrate baby girl coming. So let's get going. I'm going to show you how to make these. All right, so let's get started. Here is our vintage handkerchief that my best friend Ashley found. And look how thin it is, it's so thin. So we are going to interface it. This is Pelon SF 101, and it has glue only on the one side. Um, so you wanna find some of that. And then there is some terry cloth that I found at Joanne Fabrics. You can also use chenille or any other sort of absorbent type of material. So here's how one of the finished ones look. You can see that the body of that handkerchief is much different with the interfacing on there, and this will make it much more uh, functional. So here is our interfacing with the glue side up, and then we are gonna put our handkerchief right down on top of there and interface it together, glue it together with the iron. Make sure you follow all of the manufacturer instructions. Most of the time you're gonna be using a dry iron and you start from the middle and you work your way out so that there's no puckering or bubbles or anything like that. And generally you need to hold it still for a few minutes and make sure that that glue really melts into the fabric and gets a nice secure bond. So just be aware of that and also be careful, get all the way to your edges and also um, make sure that you're not gonna burn anything. So make sure to keep your iron moving and just make sure everything is nice and secure. Now here you can see the body of that handkerchief is much different, much more stable now with our interfacing. And now here's our terry cloth. Make sure that you have the right side um, of the terry cloth and the right side of the handkerchief facing each other. Um, so just whatever material you choose, make sure the right sides are touching. And then what we're gonna do is just lightly pin them together. See here, right side and right side. Now we're gonna pin them together and um, you don't have to do this step, but sometimes a few pins is really helpful just to make sure that the layers stay together. I have one side here that's just slightly longer um, from when I was trimming it, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down because that will make um, keeping your seam allowance uh, much more uniform if you have everything nice and flush and trimmed. Take it over to the sewing machine now and we are gonna stitch this at about a two and a half on your stitch length marker on your wheel there. So make sure it's a two and a half. And we're gonna be stitching at a half inch seam allowance. That's the number 10 there on my metal plate there. And so about half inch seam allowance back stitch to begin with. And then continue going all of the way around at a half inch seam allowance, pivoting at your corners um, at a, again, a two and a half stitch length and um, get this nice and together. Don't forget we're gonna be leaving an opening at uh, the beginning where we started so that we can turn this right side out. So let's speed this up a little bit and uh, get to the end here. Um, you can see how not having that nice flush edge just makes it so much easier to do this really, really quickly. So if you ever have a part of your terry cloth that's sort of giving off a little bit, it's okay. Um, the pins will help, but then you can just trim that down and keep going. You can use a walking foot if you really want to, but I, I don't really feel it's necessary for this project. Once you get back down to the end, once you have a two to three inch opening, you are gonna stop and backstitch, and then we're gonna be flipping it the right side out. All right, so finish that up. And then before we do that though, we need to trim our corners. Here's our opening. We need to trim our corners. Don't trim your seam line, okay? Don't trim what you just did on the sewing machine. We're just gonna trim those corners so that the corners will pop out nicely and there's no bulk in that corner, okay? So let's do that for all four of the corners. And then we will turn this right side out and, um, and get this finished up. These are so, so fast, which is what I love about these types of really simple and very functional projects right side out and then use your finger to just pop out those corners and make sure that they're nice and sharp and there's nothing folded over itself. 
Now, once that is done, you can see how the um, burp cloth is kind of coming along here. I love this print. It's just so gorgeous. These flowers are to die for. Now we want to go back over to our, our uh, ironing board and just kind of roll that seam in between your fingers. Make sure it's nice and straight and press it down just really quickly. This will help when we do our top stitch going all the way around to make sure that it's nice and straight. And then also on this opening piece, just iron that down. Make sure that those pieces are folded properly and they match up with the rest of your seam. Give the rest of it a quick press and then we're in the home stretch. We're almost done. Now for this part, I want you to pop your your stitch length up to a three and get started just using the width of your presser foot. So slightly more narrow than what we did initially, about a quarter of an inch or so. Back stitch at the beginning and then we're going to go all the way around pivoting at the corners just like we did before, but we're going to be using this like slight, slightly narrower stitch. This is how quick my Juki goes. I'm not speeding up any of this footage. You can see how fast my Juki is, which makes this really nice and quick. And the reason why I wanted you to pump that stitch up to three is just to allow it to not ripple at all and make sure that it glide, glides through nicely. When you get back to the end, back stitch, trim your threads, and um, you're done. Thanks so much for watching this part one of the baby series to celebrate my best friend's second baby girl. Stay tuned for some more baby projects and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.